r slash ask reddit what is the most interesting documentary you've ever watched does planet earth count cause nothing can top 20 hours of it my reaction watching planet earth is half amazement of the shots and half amazement that they were able to get the shots stunning stunning work i have assumed it's a couple years worth of footage shrunk down into an hour's worth of film it's incredible what they actually catch in camera yeah it's a collection of footage they've gathered over the years. I've noticed some of the footage being reused from previous shows documentaries being spliced in. It all works well and BBC does a great job putting great footage with amazing commentary. I love that Attenborough gives you all the important commentary and leaves short pauses to just experience it and take it all in. Winter on fire it's about how a student protest in Ukraine turned into a revolutionary movement. A lot of it is real footage as it unfolds. Seeing protesters gunned down by their government as it happened shook me. You hear about political revolutions in history class, but you never see actual high quality film of one from the front lines. Easily one of the best. The Jinx. The life and deaths of Robert Durst. I love true crime and this is the best doc I've seen in that genre. Very different but also amazing is touching the void, really gripping. Seconding the jinx, there are so many twists and shocking surprises in the story, and it's all true, so you can't really tell people about the good parts to get them interested, because almost everything is a spoiler. Icarus, a scandal sports doco that in real time, evolves into a Russian assassination conspiracy. My husband put this doc on, and I was half paying attention to it at the beginning. Concept was interesting, whatever. By the end, I was on the edge of my seat, soaking up every word. Such a bizarre, interesting, intense documentary. Same. I started into it thinking okay, another cycling doc, cause we do watch a ton, and my mind was blown. The thing about Icarus is that is that Rochenkov is really likable. He's the mastermind cheater, but we're on his side basically the whole time. It's amazing how likable he is. It seems surprising that he originally agreed to help some random American cheat, but after watching this documentary I feel as though it is likely that he just helped kind of for fun out of his good nature. You can tell that he is passionate about his work. He is quite literally a crazy Russian scientist, and falls exactly into the stereotype that I think of with crazy Russians. Even though he is helping people cheat, I think he is forgiven by me because he was just doing his job. Flight from Death, an award winning documentary about one of the most empirically tested ideas in psychology that sprung out of a Pulitzer Prize winning book. The basic ideal is fear of death drives some immortality projects in all of us, ranging from religion, particularly fundamentalist religion, to fame to politics to procreation. When we feel our immortality project is under assault, for example, just hearing about someone who disagrees with our religion, we react with the same kind of violent emotions we would have if our lives were under attack. It also works the other way. When we are reminded of death, we become less tolerant of the other. It's basically the closest thing we have to a meta theory of motivation, and shows our death anxiety is largely responsible for things as important as building civilizations and making war. It's obviously not comprehensive. We're far too complex to always boil down to one motivation. But the effect shows up an amazing number of places. Ha! Huh. Flight from death in French is Voldemort. God damn. That might be the first new piece of Harry Potter trivia I've heard in like 5 years. Fog of War. Robert McNamara reflects on what he learned from his roles in World War II, Cuban Missile Crisis, and Vietnam. Fascinating. Came here to post this. Errol Morris, the interviewer, originally wanted to do a documentary on the Vietnam War in general, and planned to include a segment of 20 minutes or so with McNamara. McNamara however, would go on and on, and Morris is the kind of interviewer who's really great in making and letting people just go on talking, and the result was so interesting that Morris scrapped the original plan and made the film just about this one interview, if for no other reason, people need to watch it for when Errol asks him about dropping the nuclear bomb, one of the hardest hitting moment of the documentary in my opinion. Tickled was pretty weird and very interesting. I can't recommend this one enough but it's better going in blind. Oh yeah, I saw it on my HBO Go.
and read the description they listed that it was about professional tickling. And I turned to my boyfriend like oh we're watching this shit. And it just engrossed us and we left with just a what the duck just happened feeling. How to die in Oregon. All about physician assisted deaths for individuals with terminal illness. This documentary changed my stance on assisted suicide 100%. The mother in the film was so much like my mother and I remember thinking that she deserved the death that she wanted. It also made me freaking terrified of liver cancer. After watching this documentary and watching my father-in-law suffer with ALS for 3 years, it changed my option 100%. You should be able to do it on your own terms. Dear Zachary, I got so angry while watching it I literally screamed. I found that one randomly while watching other crime docs on Netflix. I had never heard of the case, and, I won't spoil it, near the end I burst into tears. I was crying for the rest of the night. I ignored the advice reddit gave me and watched it on a Friday night. Weekend was thoroughly ruined. The fact that the documentary was made and narrated by someone close to the events and you get to see and feel his emotions as well makes it one of the best documentaries out there. Baby as I forgot who it's directed by but it's this really beautiful completely unnarrated documentary of the the first year of four different babies lives all from different parts of the globe. It's amazing how they show the kids personalities, milestones and individual cultures and customs so flawlessly. You miss the kids after the film is over. I love the Mongolian kids. The baby was so adorable and the older brother was hilariously mischievous. Being an older brother myself, I could relate. Seeing how that baby was raised, starting literally from the birth, that mom is tough, was so eye opening. We are so overprotective in the US. The contrast between the US child's parents ignoring them while yapping nonsense concerns at their checkup and the African kid licking the dirt was comedic brilliance. I also love the bit where the African kid gets his hands on this giant knife and waves it around for a bit until an adult casually takes it away from him. Like, dang. The baby got the machete again. The imposter was so wild. It put knots in my stomach but I was glued. Jiro dreams of sushi. The documentary now parody of this. One likes chicken and rice. Is amazing and so ducking funny. Searching for sugar man. I love this documentary so much. If you haven't seen it, please watch it without knowing anything except this. There was a singer slash songwriter who released some music that didn't really do well in America but it somehow made its way to South Africa. He became very well known there, unbeknownst to himself. News of his death reached South Africa but nobody truly knows how he died so a couple guys set out to figure out how he really died. Holy hell, about how easy and appealing a cult can be and what it was like being in one. Quite a well made and interesting documentary, changed my viewpoint on what happens in some cults as well as how easily people get drawn in. The King of Kong, a documentary about arcade video games that somehow becomes a struggle between good and evil, good David and Goliath, and the individual and the system. It actually recently came out that Billy Mitchell has been lying about his scores, and the only way that the scores were confirmed was by referee, and the referee was Todd Rogers who was also recently found to be a cheater. They recently proved that the video shown in the documentary was played on an emulator and spliced together. Emulators and real cabinets load differently and a frame by frame analysis showed it loaded like an emulator. Mitchell claims he never plays on emulator. An audio analysis shows that there are anomalies like dropouts of audio from where the video was spliced. Mitchell was cheating. Even in the documentary. I enjoyed exit through the gift shop. Also the design trilogy is pretty good, at least for me as an architect. They are Helvetica, objectified, and urbanized. I think they're all on Netflix as well. Every time I watch Exit I feel like I'm still somehow the sucker for enjoying Banksy's commercial product. Which I think was the point. For me to feel like that. Grizzly Man. Timothy Treadwell's story is fascinating to me. I love that he tried to promote conservation in his own unique way. Also, it is the most unintentionally hilarious documentary ever. It's when a hat sog, there's nothing unintentional about it. The Bridge. No narrator. Just people telling their story of attempted suicide or telling of a loved one that killed themselves by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Mixed with chilling. Last imagery of people before jumping. The white helmets as well. 
I was in the Coast Guard. When I was in boot camp, someone in my company got orders to station Golden Gate, a small boat station that tends to do a lot of body recovery. Word got around the company commanders, our drill instructors, and people came out of the woodwork to visit this kid, basically apologize for the trauma he was about to endure, and offer suggestions for processing grief. It was kind of surreal given the general atmosphere of boot camp. It was very sincere and personal. I thought of them the whole time I watched the documentary. The Internet's Own Boy, the story of Aaron Schwartz, tells the story of Reddit co-founder Aaron Schwartz who committed suicide after getting caught posting academic journals online. He also co-authored RSS 1.0 when he was just 14 years. Love this guy, way ahead of his time and creator of Reddit. So sad that he had to be the example the US government wanted to so unsuccessfully make. Jorodowski's Dune, a film about a movie that was never made. Cult director Alejandro Jorodowski talks about his efforts to turn Frank Herbert's Dune into a movie. The project never went forward but some call it the greatest film never made. It always gives me an intense feeling of what if. It was available on Netflix but I think it's gone now. This film is not yet rated. It's an amazing documentary about the MPAA and how freaking broke the movie rating system is in America. It goes into detail on what can get a film an instant NC-17 rating and how sexist and homophobic the MPAA is. I know that voice. About well-known voice actors from movies TV video games. And what how they do their work. It was very cool and interesting to hear from the people who voiced all the characters from my childhood. Man on wire about the Frenchman who walked on a cable between the NYC Twin Towers. It's truly breathtaking and now that the towers are gone it's also deeply emotional. Please watch it if you haven't. Senna. It's about the racing life of Brazilian F1 driver Ayrton Senna. No narration. Just interviews and commentary as it really happened. I never cared about F1 before. But watching this made me appreciate how dangerous the sport is and how borderline insane the drivers have to be to do it. OJ. Made in America. It's been hard for me to convince people to watch this because they don't give a shit about OJ. But I think it's about a lot more than just OJ. Yes I found the social commentary about OJ rejecting the black community and then them embracing him because they hated the LAPD so much was really interesting. On Netflix. Chef's Table, and particularly the episode concerning Grant Ackerts, having eaten at a linear before and actually watched him work up close. It was incredibly fascinating being able to watch arguably the world's greatest chef through this medium. The Massimo episode makes me feel so happy and cozy. Chef's Table is great. And an ex-skateboarder. I really enjoyed watching Dogtown and Zed Boys. It put the skateboarding scene into perspective for me. Have you seen all this mayhem? Really interesting documentary about the 90s skating scene, and some of the first celebrities. The Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. You've never seen trash until you've seen that family. Cave of Forgotten Dreams. It's about the Chowvert Cave paintings, which are the oldest known human paintings. Werner Herzog got permission to enter the cave and film the actual paintings. Which is basically unheard of, a really mind opening and subtly soothing film. Blue Gold. Who knew the history of blue jeans could be so fascinating? I've watched it four times. Into Eternity. About the disposal of nuclear waste in Finland. Fascinating. Scary. Beautifully made. China Beyond the Clouds. A series about the people of a traditional town in China. The best fly on the wall I've ever seen. Capturing the Freedmans. Started out as a documentary about children's birthday party entertainers. But the director switched the focus to one birthday clown's family who were notoriously convicted of child sexual abuse. The craziness comes from the fact that the family filmed lots of home movies during the time of the trial and they are truly bizarre. Paris is Burning. A chronicle of mid to late 80s drag ball culture in New York City. Through interviewing participants and showing live footage of the balls the film gives a fascinating exploration of race, gender, class, and sexuality in America. Even if you don't identify as LGBT the film offers an interesting view of how identity is constructed. 
The Parking Lot movie is one of my underrated favorites. It's about a bunch of over-educated parking lot attendants in Charlottesville, VA in their strained relationship with themselves and the world around them. It's a great slice of life film. It's also on Netflix. Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. It's a documentary about Jim Carrey and his acting career and the struggles of method acting. It is absolutely fantastic and Jim speaks some crazy truth on it. It left me thinking about it for days. Couldn't recommend it more. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.